exploring UVs and shaders by texture mapping this wall. Apply shaders to each object. Right click, assign new material. Going to choose Lambert. Let me give this Lambert a name, calling it wall. Do the same for the door frame. Right click, assign new material, Lambert. Door frame. And this will be the door. Right click, assign new material, Lambert. I'm just going to give a base color to each one, make it a little easier to see. Door frame. And then the door. Click the swatch, pick a color. Let's take a look at the UVs for this wall. UV, UV editor. And this is what the wall is looking like. It might seem a little unexpected, but since it was box modeled, this is what was created. If we try to apply a texture map to this, it's not going to turn out the way we want or expect. Going to choose the grid. Press the six key to see texture maps in the viewport. There's several ways to go fix this. Let's look at the quickest way that usually works. Select the object, go under UV, select automatic. Hey, look, worked, we're done. Things are sideways, but we could fix that. UV, UV editor. I'm going to select the faces. I'm going to select the faces to get a better understanding of the layout. And this is the door region right here. You turn on or off the preview of the image. It makes it a little easier to understand. Right now I'm concerned about the orientation. When you use automatic mapping, you can see the UV shell is broken off. You can right click, go to UV shell, select the shell. With the rotate tool selected, hold down the J key first and then rotate the UV shell. You can use the move tool to position the UVs as if this was the real image. You could use the move tool to position the UVs and fix them. It did a good job. This has to be repeated for all sides of the model. It'll be the same process. Find the ones that aren't working. Click here and that gives you a cue of what's going on. E key to select the rotate tool. J key to rotate and then just drag along the gizmo to rotate. It's a good idea to use one of these numbered grids textures just to see what's going on. But now I can apply the real texture to this object. Selecting the object within the properties window, going to the color swatch, following the connection by clicking the icon. Under the file tab, Select the browse icon and I'm going to apply from my maps directory bricks. Before I continue scaling the bricks, let's take a look at some uh, take five. Let's take a look at properties that we can add to the bricks, such as the bump map. This is an example of the Lambert shader. The bump map or normal maps will be in different positions depending upon the shader. Just like the brick pattern was connected, go to the bump mapping and click the input and make a connection to a file. And that file, going to the file to tab, clicking on the browse icon, I'll select the normal map. And now we have some bumpy bricks. The normal map or a bump map will create the illusion of bumpiness or indentations on a surface. I'm going to place into the scene an Arnold Flight Sky Dome Light and click on Render. 
is an example with the bump map created. If I remove the bump map and to remove an input, go back to the shader, right click over the label that you want to disconnect and select break connection. I'll render it again. And now those details are gone.